Here's the 10 golden rule in investing in real estate. Now, I gone through the mistake, you guys, of all these rules, and I actually made so many mistakes because I never had these rules in place because no one told me. Today, I want to share with you guys these golden rules so that you know that anytime you come up on it, you never want to break this. That way, you don't actually lose your ass off when you invest in real estate. Golden rule number one, you got to buy it right. You heard the saying, the deal is always in the buy. When you buy a property, all the opportunity is in the buy, not in the sale. Now, if you buy in turnkey, you should always pay market value. You shouldn't have to pay much more than market value. That's why when the market was so crazy, how people was paying 100 grand over asking, 200 grand over asking, those people all lose their money, basically, because they're paying way too much for it. Now, if you buy in what I call fixer-upper, burr, you gotta make sure you gotta buy it right. Here's a rule of thumb, okay, standard. When you do a burr deal, your purchase and your rehab all in compared to the ARV, you should get at least, I gotta say, 20, 25% margin. For example, if you're doing a burr, if your purchase price and your rehab are in a 700 and your ARV is a mill, I mean, you got 30% margin, okay? So on a burr deal, you wanna get at least a 25 to 30% margin. On a flip, probably somewhere between 15 and 20. And then a wholesale deal, probably 10, 12, 13%. Anything below 10%, forget about it. If you're an agent, list the property. Golden rule number two, you gotta make sure you buy the right type of property. And what I mean by right type of property, there's home that I call their one level home, there's home that are two story home, there's mid century, they're all style. When you buy property with the right style, they actually help you bear to maximize your value. So for example, this property here, this is a one story with a basement. If you actually buy this, this property, you can actually rent the base, lower basement and you can live up on top. If you get a Rambler, okay, you're not gonna be able to do much, but I know some city, all you got is Rambler. So if you ever buy a two bedroom, one bath, for example, you wanna make sure that you actually expand that Rambler so you get more bedroom and bath. That's for example. You also wanna buy a property where it has a good layout. You might be able to see this, right, when you go in, but if it has a really bad layout, it doesn't matter how you configure it, it's always gonna be bad. That's not a good property to buy. Or finding property that has the 80 unit back, so you can put the 80 unit backyard. This is what I mean by buying the right type of property. Go to rule number three. You gotta buy in the right location. You heard this saying, location, location, everything about real estate investing, which is so true. Now, if you're part of my springboard mentorship, you understand I've been saying this forever. You gotta understand the full market. You got the A, the B, the C, and the D. The A market is the high end area, and then the D market are the area where lots of crime, right? Um, you know, there's not a lot of retail store out there, and it's still, you know, struggling, okay? School district is not that great. B's and C in the middle. A are the high end. You never want to buy rental in those areas. You don't want to buy rental in the D area. You want to buy between the B's and the C. You got to understand that. Now, you can fix and flip in our area, but ideally you want to buy rental in the B's and the C's, okay? If you buy rental, the key is you got to make sure you know where the B's and the C's are at. If you're going to fix and flip and wholesale, you can do it in all four areas. So this is why you got to understand location, location is everything, and you got to know what type of product you're buying. Go to rule number four. Don't buy on emotion. That is the worst thing you can do as a real estate investor. Listen, the reason why people buy on emotion because they get so caught up, they wanna keep up with all the Joneses and all the other investors they see on stage, on social media. Oh my God, they got 10 property, 100 property, I only got one. And they go out there trying to buy to buy. The problem when you start buying on emotion, you start to basically just throw away all the rules I'm gonna talk about here, just so you can buy. And you know what happened? They always get screwed. I know a person recently that invested in a deal with his partner and they bought an emotion and guess what? At the end of the day, this deal basically are falling apart and they are losing $200,000 on this single family flip because they bought on emotion versus basically number. So if you ever want to have peace of mind, buy on number versus emotion. Go to rule number five. Don't be scared to buy and pull the trigger. Okay, look, when you're starting out, when you're looking at property, right? Of course, you gotta do the research in the area. What are homes selling for after they get all remodeled? What are home renting for? Uh, what does it cost to rehab a property? You do all your research. If you find a property and you go and you make the offer and you lose the deal for whatever reason, it's okay, but at least you try. But the fact that if you wanna invest and you do all your research in the market, contract work and right, how long it takes to rent and find rental, you do all your research. When you find the right deal, folks, you gotta pull the trigger. So don't be afraid to buy, but do your research first. Think logically, think numbers. If it makes sense, buy it. Go to rule number six, you need reserve. 
if you're gonna own run a property, you gotta have reserve, especially if you want peace of mind. I learned it from a mistake by not having basically no money because I always leverage my money. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you have rental, if you want peace of mind, here's what you gotta do. Every rental property, you gotta have at least three months of reserve on the mortgage, okay? Just because you never know when a disaster might hit, another COVID might hit, or a tenant moves out, you need to actually have some money to rehab the property. You just need to have some reserve, okay? Reserve come in many forms. You can actually have basically cash in your saving account. You can actually have a HELOC on your property. You can have it sitting in the money market when it's making money. The key, you want to access it basically quickly, like maybe two or three days. Not you have to refinance the property to get money out. Cause when you need money, you need it quick. So this is how you actually have peace of mind. Have some reserve, have it in some kind of form like this. So when you need it, you can get to it ASAP. Go to rule number seven. Do not over leverage your property. This is the mistake I made. This is the mistake I see a lot of investors preaching on social media right now. That actually I'll tell people, oh, you know what? When you have enough equity, pour out all your money and use it to buy more property, okay? This is where it's the young people saying it. Ask all the OG that been around there tell you, never over leverage your property. All the young people now, they're all doing this. You know why? Because they're trying to get to the top of the mountain as fast as possible. They don't give a shit about nothing. Give them five or 10 years, give them a bad market, and you're gonna see what happens. They're gonna eat those words, okay? I know, I've been there. So, here's the thing. The bank always want at least 25% down when you buy a rental property, okay? You wanna make sure you always have that. If you're ever gonna refinance, have a minimum of 25% and more. That's why you always hear me talk when you do the burr, you want at least 25% in margin all the time, okay? Me, when I do my burr, I always want 25% and I only pull out my original down payment. I leave all my equity in there. And eventually, when I have enough property, right, just like you guys, if you get enough door that you say you need, right, to give you the lifestyle you want, then just start paying them off. Because until it's all paid off, you won't see the full benefit of all the cash flow. So don't over leverage your property. Make sure you have equity in your property at all times. Go to rule number eight. Do not buy small houses for rental. Because let me explain what I mean. When I started, I used to buy two bed and one bath. And what I realized, two bed and one bath, you're only gonna get so much rent. Then I noticed when you buy a three bed and one bath, the rent literally jumped up massively from a two and a three. If you look at an apartment building, look what rent go for for a two bedroom versus a three bedroom. It jumped up massively in rent. Now, you're gonna pay a little more for a three bedroom, one bath, but you're gonna make it up for the rent jump up significantly. In time, you'll make up that money. The appreciation is gonna be better for a three bedroom, one bath because there's more people wanna buy three bedroom versus two bedroom. Two bedroom, you're keeping it very small to single people, maybe a couple. Three bedroom, open up to a family. So you're gonna be more buyers for that. Now, the only time you ever wanna buy a two bedroom is this. You wanna buy a two bedroom, but then you got room to expand into a three, one, three, two, okay? Or if there's a basement, you buy a two bedroom, one bath, it's a basement that's unfinished. You can finish the basement, add more, two more bedroom, two more bath downstairs. So now it makes it more than two bedroom, one bath. Or if you're gonna buy a two bedroom, one bath, then there's no room to do basement, no room to add, add bedroom bathroom, but the backyard or the garage you convert it to an ADU, then that's actually worth buying a two bedroom. Go to rule number nine, do not flip everything. This is the thing I see so many people doing and they always tell me, that's my biggest regret. I wish I would never flip everything. Look, I get it. If your business is basically making money on buying houses and fixing a flip so you can make money, then good, do it. If you're gonna flip 10 homes a year, ideally, try to at least keep three to five of those as rental. And then the other five is seed money, keep going and keep going and keep going. Folks, if you're always gonna flip everything and you're gonna get this big bag of money and you have no write-off, you're gonna pay 50% of that money to Uncle Sam. And what do you have at the end of the, end of the day? You got no investment property at all. You have no asset, you have no passive income, and you have no compound appreciation or your property double, 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 double in the future. Or you got this big bag of money and you got all this cash that came in every year and you live in a good life and you buy in all the nice stuff, have all the nice experience, but you got no, basically no wealth. So if you're going to be rich and wealthy, flip houses to be rich because that's money coming in the front door, take some of that money and buy rental. Or if you flip in 10 a year, trying to keep three to five as rental, the other you sell and make money, got it? And lastly, go to rule number 10. Wealth comes from owning real estate, not flipping real estate. So, my mentor said to me a long time ago, I was 27 years old. 
You can be rich by flipping houses, selling real estate, working nine to five. The only problem with that, you make a lot of money, but half of the money goes to Uncle Sam and you have nothing to show at the end of the day. Wealth is when people own real estate. They have asset, it's appreciating over time. And that's something you can lead to the next generation. Wealth is also when you trade your money back for time and go do things that's important to you that you wanna do when you get older, rich. And you're trading your time to go make money. But when you get older, folks, you're, not gonna, be, you're gonna be less motivated to work. You're gonna wanna spend time hanging out with your kids and grandkids. You're not gonna have the same motivation, energy, endurance to go do that stuff. So you wanna be rich by making money and flipping houses, but you want to actually take the money and park it and owning real estate. And that way later on, when you get to my age in the 50, you have plenty of cash flow, plenty of asset that if you want to work, you can. If you don't want to work, you don't have to. At the end of the day, wealth is about freedom, option, and choice. All right, that is a wrap for this video. Now, if you're ever going to invest in real estate, like I said to you, do not break the golden rule. If you break it, and you're gonna experience uh, frustration and stress and lose sleep at night, then remember, that said, never break these golden rules, okay? So, if you all like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Help a brother out. We wanna hit a million subscribers by the end of this year, right? All right, you guys, have an awesome day. Peace out.